Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lesson in Power Apps course. In previous lesson, we have completed the basic section learning in Power Apps and in this section we are starting with intermediate level. So the first topic is Power Apps best practices. Then we will cover for all function, patch function, some display feature, then introduction to Power Automate and how we can integrate the Power Automate with Power Apps. So to start with the intermediate level, we are first going to start with Power Apps best practices. So uh, the first topic uh, for best practices is the components in Power Apps. So let's see what is components in Power Apps. So Power Apps components. Power Apps offers a reusable building blocks called as components. So in my previous uh, videos, uh, we have learned about how we can add different controls on the screens to meet with our requirements. So for example, there is a requirement that uh, in my application, I have five screens and on each of the screens, I, I will have one header component here or the header uh, header section on this screen. So let's first build the header section and then we will copy that header section into five different screens. Now to develop the header section, we will first add a rectangle. Then uh, it will be like this. Then I will add one image control to show the logged in user image. We'll place it here. Uh, to make it, uh, let me zoom this and okay. To make this look better, we can say the border, uh, let's say width is 50, height, height is 50 and border radius is 25 so that it will be a circular in shape. Then we can give the image as uh, user dot image. So we have learned the user function in one of the previous video where how we can get the user full name, uh, image, email address. And here you see that I'd, I have not set up my image. So it's giving me this MJ initials. Then uh, I want to show the username so I can put some label over here. Okay, the label is added here. Let me zoom this. And I'll say color is in white color. And here I will say welcome is ampersand um, user dot full name. And in this way, we can show the logged in username. Also, let's say uh, we have to show some uh, screen name over here. So I can again add one um, label. I can make it big uh, color as white. Let's make it center aligned. Um, make the font size as 25 and text, let's say home page. Okay. So now uh, we have created a simple header on this screen. Now I have the requirement to uh, use the same header in five different pages. So let me create uh, five screens or just for testing let's take only three screens now I will copy everything from this screen so press control key and copy this go to screen 2 and paste it similarly do this on third screen so in this way we have successfully created a header uh, module on each screen now for screen 2 uh, let's say this let's make this as uh, second screen this is just a testing or uh, test header i'm taking so this is second screen and let's say this is the third screen okay so now let's um, go back to our actual discussion which is what is power apps components so um, we can definitely create the um, header modules like this but now there is a requirement that a uh, client or your business is asking to change the background color of this header to uh, some other color, let's say light gray color. Now, in that case, you will need to go into each of these screens and make the modifications. For example, I'll go to screen one, I'll select that uh, rectangle, 
then I will click on this color pane and I'll select the light gray color. Similarly, I will go to second screen, select the module or select the rectangle, change the gray color. Go to screen 3, do the change and go to now again business came and they asked you to no we need to put the email address of the logged in user instead of their uh, display name or along with the display name they want the uh, email address of the logged in user below the display name so these kind of changes will come and in that case it is very difficult to go into each of these screens and make the modifications and it also does not look consistent for example on the screen one somehow if i move this to by some mistake i move to the left side and now when you see when i'm moving to second screen uh, the heading is not aligned properly okay so these kind of inconsistencies can also occur so to fix these uh, thing or to fix or to reduce the rework uh, working on different components which can be reused there is a concept of components so with the help of components, you can create the reusable building blocks, which you can use uh, in your Power Apps application. So uh, let's see what is next. Components can be utilized by app makers within the same app or across different apps through the component library. Now, what is component library that I'm going to cover in my next session? So if we go to Power Apps course content, if we go to advanced level we can see the components library so we will talk about components library in detail later but uh, for now just understand uh, that the component library serves as a storage unit for all available components that means whatever usable component you are going to develop you can make a container of that or you can add those as a component library and you can use it across different applications as well but in today's video we are going to create a component which is uh, scoped with that uh, single canvas app application so uh, then there are custom properties as well uh, so let's talk about com custom properties uh, after some time but for now let's first create the component now our object is objective is that instead of these individual controls on each screen we are going to create a component that can be used as a single control uh, in different screens okay so uh, let me first uh, delete all these existing controls okay now we have three screens without any controls so let's move to the component so here is the component section that you can see and uh, currently as we don't have any component so we have to click on new component similarly on the screens when we don't have any screen we can just click on this new screen and we select what template we need and we will create the screen similarly in components we'll create a new component so as soon as i clicked on new component a blank component uh, has created and you can see this is the component uh, section you can rename this component so i will say cmp header uh, CMP stand for component you can give any name but as a best practice uh, follow these naming conventions so this is CMP header now how the header will look uh, header should be like this much uh, so this should um, take this much uh, screen width uh, and height so this is rectangle so instead of this we will say width as app dot width that means whatever app you have it should take the same width of that uh, app then what is the height height should be let's say i i would need a, a header of height 80 and now you see that we have this this much header this is a basically a container now now we need to add different controls here so instead of adding that rectangle i don't need to add rectangle i can just fill this with the background color as let's say blue color now i'll add the image control the same way uh, we did uh, last time How height should be 60 y should be 10 width should be 60 so i'll place it here okay and make the border radius as 30 half of the height so that it will be exact circular and this should be 
user dot image this is the same steps that we are following that we followed uh, during developing this header component in the screen section then we will add a label uh, let's make the color as white text as welcome space ampersand user dot full name and you see that we got this uh, welcome message. I can align this to the right. Okay, great. Now we have to add the screen name as well here. So I'll put a, a text. Uh, let's make it center aligned, height as 20, uh, font size as 25, color as white. And the text is home screen okay perfect so our header component is uh, completed and you see that when i move to the screen now we need to use that component which is a reusable component on different screens screen one two three now to add a component when you click on this insert section you have to go under custom section under that you will see your a uh, newly developed component we can create multiple component using again click on this new component and this is your second component you can create as much components as you want and then you can see those components in this custom section so we have created this cmp header so i will use that and you see that it got added and this is looking very beautiful similarly we can go to screen 2 add a same component go to screen 3 add a same component and you see that this is serves as a single control in your screen Initially, we were having four controls on the rectangle two labels and one image control instead of that now It is a group of controls which is a component and it will serve as a single component now you can you cannot modify this uh, Component from the screen you have to go to components So let's move toward the next section So so far we have created a component and we have used that component on the screen, but if you see one issue uh, is that on this screen one it is saying home screen on the screen two also it is saying home screen on on the screen three it is also saying home screen uh, which is not the case so the requirement is that on screen one it should show home screen on screen two it should say second screen and on screen three it should say third screen now uh, if we change anything from here home screen if if I change it here let, let's say I will say second screen okay and it is changed and if i go back to my screen section you see that all components are now again changed to second screen which is also wrong so now we have the requirement that this should be dynamic based on the screen and user should have ability to configure the component and it's when this uh, custom properties comes into picture before that uh, i hope you are now clear about what is component now uh, before moving towards the custom properties uh, let me show you the uh, use case of this uh, component now uh, we had the requirement that now the client want this background color to be in gray color so we can just go to components and change the fill to gray color and you see that it has changed and if i go back to screens you can see that all components from all the screens have now background color as gray in this way we have reduced our work or maintenance of the app and this will look consistent across all the screens now if i want to add the email address below this uh, display name i can just go back to my component i will add one more label i will move towards the right make this width as this one change the color to white align this to right and change this to user.email okay uh, you can remove this wrap and in this way you can see that we have successfully added the email address of the logged in user as well I hope you are now clear about uh, what is the use of components and now let's see what are custom properties of the components 
So there are three properties, uh, input property, output property, and behavior properties. Behavior properties are out of scope for this uh, intermediate level. We are going to talk about behavior properties in the advanced level. For now, uh, let's learn about input properties and output properties. So what are custom properties? Custom properties enable the component to receive input and produce some output. These operation uh, properties, these properties are displayed in the property panel of component instance and can be configured in the same manner as the control properties. So if you remember, each control will have their own properties like the text, font, font size, font weight and all. So the component also we can create the custom properties of the components. So when you click on this component section, the main container, you can see the custom properties section. So here we can create a new custom property. Now why we are uh, why we need the custom properties? So the requirement was to show the dynamic header on different screens. Okay. So uh, to to make the components dynamic in nature and configurable, we need the custom properties. So there are uh, two uh, three types of properties. So let's first learn about input input properties. This type of property can receive values from the app and which uh, component can use internally. So basically we are trying to provide the values to the component so that it can use that value to show the output. So here let's create one uh, in input property. So if you see here property type, uh, we have input and output property. So let's first select the input property. I will say that a home, uh, sorry, the screen name. So my property name is screen name this is the display name this is the name of the property then description so we'll say provide the screen name okay then we have the data type as well so here if you see we have text number boolean date and time and uh, all of the types so in this case what is required as we are going to pass the screen name or the title of that screen so we will say it is a text property. So we'll select a text and we'll uh, click on create. Now you see that screen name property is created, which is a text property. Now how to configure this? Uh, we'll, we'll tell you that. So if you go back to the screen and if you select the component, you can see the screen name property and which you can configure. So let's say I'll say home screen here but it has not reflected yet because we have not connected this property with the header or the uh, this label but for now let's configure it for com uh, for this component we have configured it as home screen for first screen so go back to component now we need to read this value whatever screen name user is going to provide with this label and how to do that to do that uh, go to the select that label go to the text property which we need to configure and this is hard coded second screen this is hard coded so instead of this we need to get it dynamic to get the dynamic value from the property so what is that property it was screen name and which component has that property it is cmp header so i will first write cmp header this is my component and what is the property of that header it is screen name whatever screen name you will configure here it will populate here so i'll go back to screen and now you see that as i did configure this as home screen it is now showing home screen let's go to the second component now here it is text so let me configure this as second screen and you see that it is now second screen go to third this is third screen in this way, we have made the uh, component configurable so that it can accept some input from the user and it can configure the uh, screen name. Uh, I hope you are now clear about input properties. Now let's learn about output properties. This type of property can emit data or state of the component where which you can use uh, in your application. So. Uh, for output properties, you might use this uh, uh, 
less compared to the input properties but it is very useful in case whenever there is a need to emit the data from your component now to do that uh, now i have the requirement that uh, in the header section I, at this case is um, i'm just taking for uh, explaining output properties but uh, the case uh, the use case can be different so the requirement is that uh, on the header section you are going to get one text box uh, uh, and you need to show its value on uh, you need to show its square uh, in the screen on the screen so if i put a uh, number as 20 it should show 400 because a square of 20 is 400 then uh, that is the requirement basically so how i can do so i'll say uh, let me first show you how to get the square so I can put some text label or uh, text input here This is I'm doing on the screen. Okay, not on the header and I'll put some label Here now this is my text input I'll remove the value. Okay, and this, this should be so copy the name of this text input go to the label select the text property and say uh, Text input one dot text into text input dot text. basically we are uh, multiplying this uh, two values so if I go now here and say 20 it is giving me 400 but the requirement is that this text box should be on each of the screen okay and this label should also be on the uh, uh, each screen and I should be able to read its value from this header section so to do that uh, let me delete this okay so we'll go to component let's add one text input so as soon as we added this text input this should be available on all the screens so if you see here we have text input on all the screens now uh, whatever user will enter in this text box we need to show its value uh, on the uh, the square of that value on the screen so to do that we'll create one output property so here we will say um, user inputted number so this is the user uh, the number given by the user and let's create output property and the data type would be uh, let's say text that is fine you can take text or number anything and click on create now you see that this is the output property uh, which is this one and uh, select now how to return that value to the screen so uh, select that control or select that property and instead of text just say this text input one dot text so here how we are uh, emitting data to the screen or how we are output we are giving output to the screen is using output property and we are configuring that output property in the component so if you see the difference between input and output properties is that input properties will be configured on screen so this is screen and on the screen we are configuring the input properties but if you see the output properties we need to configure in the component itself so here uh, the user inputted number so this is a custom output property that we have created and we are out we are giving the output of the text input dot text uh, with this property now we can use this property on our screen so go here now if i add some label over here and say now what is this uh, component name it is cmp header 1 this this component which is this one okay and i want its um output property which is user inputted text number so now what will happen whatever i will enter uh, whatever number i will enter i will get its value but if i want the square of this number so i will say this into the same value so now if i go back you can see the square of 23 is 529 
similarly if i go on the different screen i can add some label i'm adding this label so that uh, i can use the output property of the component then i'll say cmp header 2 dot user inputted number so this will be let's say 20 so it will give me 400 value in this way we have successfully used input and output properties in components now let's explore a bit on what are other types of uh, properties or type of uh, input properties so when i showed you when we create the uh, input property we have different data types so let's take an example of um, color color property okay so we'll say uh, this as um, background color okay so this is our input property and this is a color property i'll click on create now this is a background color input property we have to use uh, in this component now the requirement of the client is that they want uh, to use this component but they want it uh, different colors in different screens for example they want the header in red color on the first screen green on second and yellow on third so we can do that also the same way so we have created a background color input property with the type as color now i can use this as a background color so go to the fill property of this uh, select the main container click on the fill property and here instead of this hard coded gray color we can say cmp header dot background blur okay now if i go back to my screen i will have the ability to configure so i will say here i want red color for the second screen i want green color for third screen i want yellow color in this way uh, we have successfully used the same component with different colors on different screens then uh, let's learn about something else which is let's say um screen let's say take a screen example okay so here i will say um navigate to navigate to screen this is my input property okay so now uh, let's say the requirement is that a client is asking to have some button on the header on click of which uh, the user will navigate to different screens and that screen should be configurable on this uh, header component so now let's add that um, let's add one input button or let's say i will say yeah button is fine okay now on on click of this on select event of the button we want to navigate navigate to cmp why i'm using the cmp header so we have to read the input property of the cmp header component and that property is navigate to screen this input property we have to read that's why i'm using cmp header dot navigates to screen okay so now what will happen i will configure on screen one component i will configure it as navigate to uh, by default it will say app dot active screen so remove that and say screen two that means from first screen he will be able to navigate second and from second screen uh, configure this to he should be able to go to screen three and from screen three, he should be able to go back to screen one. So select this property, or if you select this header, you can also see that property under this drop down. So navigate to screen, and here say screen one. So now let's play the app. So if I click on this one, it will go to second screen. If I click on second screen, it will go to third screen. And if I click on third screen, it will go back to the home screen. In this way, we can also create the input properties which has type as screen. Similarly, we have a lot of other types. So you can pass the record 
you can pass the table so uh, remaining uh, types we we will use in our upcoming sessions when we are going to actually develop some actual business case uh, i will try to explain all these in more details but for now um, uh, you should understand that we can create input and output properties with a uh, different type of um, uh, types basically uh, I hope you are now clear about uh, what is components and how we can use components in our Power Apps application. In the advanced session, we are definitely going to talk about behavior properties and what are components libraries. But till then, if you have any question, please do let me know in the comment section. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video and share with your colleagues. And till then, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.